I wanted to speak to you about being able to give a joyful yes to Jesus. The first thing to understand is that Jesus is never going to call you to a vocation that does not bring you joy and fulfillment. Be sure of that. He'll never do that. He doesn't want you to be burdened and saddened by his invitation to follow him. Now, that doesn't mean that you won't have some struggles if you start to realize that God is calling you to a vocation that wasn't in your plans for your life. You may go through that. So that's why it's important not to automatically reject the possible call. So what do you do in that case? You continue to pray about it. And you go through the process of discernment. Pray, speak with your spiritual guide if you have one, your parish priest or a spiritually wise person that you know. And if you continue to feel burdened and saddened, you know that it's not for you. I heard a testimony of a vocation of a priest once, and he said that as a young man, he was praying, always prayed for strong and holy men to follow the priesthood, strong and holy priests for the church. And one day he felt that God was calling him to the priesthood. And he said, no, no, that's not for me. I'm praying for other men to follow that call and for the church because I want to be married and have a family. So he didn't reject it, but he tried to avoid it. And one day when he continued to have that feeling, um, he just told Jesus, okay, if you want me to be your priest, you put that desire in my heart because I don't want it. I want to be married and I want to have a family. So you're going to have to put the desire in my heart. So every day he started praying that, Jesus, if you want me to be your priest, you put the desire in my heart. And he did. And he said when he looks back on his life now, that he couldn't see himself in any other way of life except as Jesus priest. So that's one example. Don't automatically reject a possible call that is not in your plans. Okay, I've also heard people say, I know that God wants me to enter the religious life. I don't feel happy about that, but it's what God wants and I'm going to enter the convent and I'll offer that as a sacrifice for my past sins. <laughs> Remember, Jesus wants you to have a happy, joy-filled life more than you do. And we can see this in the scriptures. For example, in the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verse 11, it says, I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. Okay? That my joy may be in your, you and your joy may be complete. Okay. And this is before Jesus, uh, before he went through the passion. And another example is John 17, 13. And it says, okay, it says right here. And this is when Jesus is talking to his father. But now I am coming to you. I speak this in the world so that they may share my joy completely that they may share my joy completely. So when I was reflecting on that, I said, well, so Jesus wants to give us his joy. But I asked myself, what is his joy? And I read something that, that I think really says it all. It said that the joy of Jesus was his absolute self-surrender and self-sacrifice to his father. The joy of doing that which the father sent him to do. And we are called to follow Jesus' example by doing what the father has sent us to do. Because it's in doing God's will. And I've mentioned to you before. What he has sent us to do that will... That way we will experience the fullness of joy possible in this life 
and bring the greatest glory to God. So let us pray for each other that we trust in our Lord and surrender ourselves to him daily, doing what he sent us to do. So be assured, my sisters and I are praying for all of you. Please keep all the servants of Mary, ministers to the sick, in your prayers. God bless you.